how do we start crafting messages that truly stick, that resonate, that people remember, that are like compelling, people are, oh yeah, I want that. How do you come up with that? Well, some of it can be based on your market experience, you're just intimately familiar with buyers. So that's a good starting point, but you know, still a hypothesis. So really, the prerequisite to crafting compelling messaging is customer research, or specifically, buyer research, target customer research. The key idea that what you need to do is you need to conduct buyer intelligence through surveys, through interviews. So interviews, of course, is the highest quality medium or format. However, surveys are, are um, they scale better. So interviews, they don't scale very well. It's expensive, it's time consuming, getting people to agree to do interviews. You know, it's like conducting 20 interviews is already very tiring. Whereas serving 100 people, pretty easy, right? And so if you have access to on-demand qualitative research through uh, providers like Winter, you can just survey your target buyers and ask them about the main things are their jobs to be done. What is it that they're trying to accomplish? How are they measuring the success? Why is that important to them? How is their manager uh, assessing their progress? Like what is the KPI they have at, at work? What are the pains your target customer wants to avoid? What are the top three pains? What are the desired gains? What are they like, oh yeah, I want that. What's like a dream, if you say like, you could have that and they're like, I really want that. For instance, CXL is selling training products. And one of the buyers is like a marketing team lead, like VP marketing, director of marketing, so who, who runs a marketing team. And so at CXL, we surveyed the VP marketing's about how important is it to you to train your team? And in principle, people were like, oh yeah, very important, very important. And then, and then we had this big list of problems, you know, like acquiring customers, lowering CPAs, and all these things, and also like training your people were, was in there. Please rank these pain points in the order of importance. What's the most important priority for you, and second, and, and then so on and so forth. Training people was not a top 10 priority. Even though people on paper said, oh yeah, in principle, I'm all for training people. And then we also, when we asked people to give a numerical score, how big of a pain is training your people? And on a 10 point scale, and the average, like the, the result was like 5.4. So basically, we found out that if our ICP, ideal customer profile, is a marketing leader, like a VP marketing type of person, they're not really interested in training their people. I mean, in principle they are, but really, really no. And you find this out through surveys. And so if you hadn't done this, this kind of prep work, you would never know. And you would like, oh yeah, train your team, man. And you think that's a really compelling message, but in reality it's like meh, right? You gotta find out what is, a, what is the real pain. So when we dug deeper, it's like, okay, hiring, sorry, training people is not a big pain. So what is a pain? Hiring people, hiring talent, finding talent. Fast and, and so on and so forth. That's a real pain point. And so that, that insight led us to develop a new offering to target a much you know, bigger pain point. So whenever you start crafting new messaging, you want to do a jobs to be done survey. You want to do uh, pains, like what are the top pains? And if you have an idea of which pain you're going to solve, have them rank that pain versus other pains. Have them give a, a numerical score to how big of a pain it is. In the same way, the desired gains, like the, the value you're selling, you know, like the, the, uh, what is the main value proposition? You get this when you buy apps. How badly do they want it, right? Is it the vitamin? Is it the painkiller? Figure that stuff out before you write a single word. The absolute best way to get someone to do something is to make them want to do it. And you do that through words. Without strong messaging, you're relying on their intrinsic motivation. And sure, intrinsic motivation can go a long way. This is when somebody enters your pipeline, comes to your website, and they already want to buy. Well, easy, right? Here it is. Then sales becomes just, you know, like you help them buy, right? Like they already want to buy, you help them buy. However, if they come in and they're like, hmm, I'm not sure if I need this thing. Or somehow they ended up on your website. Right? 
So then you need to increase their motivation to take action. You can't just describe what your product is, like uh, let's say we're selling cars, like how many horsepower and how many doors and like, it's not enough, right? We need to say like, why this car? Why do you even need a car? So you need to increase their motivation. And how do you do that? You do that through words and your messaging, the messages, key messages you communicate to the user on that website, it needs to resonate. Right? You need to know that it hits home. And how do we do that? How do we figure out whether it resonates or not? That's hard because the symptoms of ineffective messaging aren't easy to spot. In fact, you might have terrible messaging and odds are you have no idea. You probably collect and analyze almost every imaginable metric, every click, every scroll, every interaction on your website. But how do you know your messaging is working? Mm. Conversion rate, some people say. I'll look at the conversion rate. Well, conversion rate is a lagging metric, which means that it's kind of like driving through by looking at the rear view mirror. It's what already happened, right? Conversion rate is the effect. And messaging is the cause. Cause and effect. You can't focus on the effect. You need to focus on the cause. You can't say, that, hey, my conversion rate, whatever, 3.2%. What? Maybe it could be six, maybe it could be seven, right? So we need to figure out how to improve the messaging so the effect will be bigger. If we get messaging right, messaging make, increases motivation to take action. The effect, them signing up, buying your thing, you know, we have more of it, higher conversion rate. And there might also be second order consequences, uh, about positive ones mostly, like you get more word of mouth and so on and so forth. So what makes messaging good. In order for us to measure messaging, measure resonance, and improve messaging, we need to break the messaging down into components. We need to measure each of these components separately. The five components of messaging are, number one, clarity. Do they get it? Number two, relevance. Is what you're offering, what you're communicating, is it aligned with the priorities and challenges at hand of the target customer. Three, value. There's the promise of value that you have, like you're making some sort of offer, get this benefit, do they want it? Four, differentiation. Well, why you? You probably have 10 to maybe even 100 direct competitors plus countless indirect competition. Why you? And five, brand perception or emotion. Like, do you come across the way you wanna come across? And so, if you get the clarity right, it's clear. It's highly relevant. I want the value, clearly differentiate. I, I know why you and not somebody else. And it's also triggering some sort of brand affiliation, um, some sort of emotion in me. That increases my motivation. That's the cause, and the effect is somebody signing up.